Okay, so I had planned on doing this quite a while ago. I ran into a large number of computer problems, basically with both of my computers, my big server and my workstation, both having problems. It, it hasn't been a fun time, uh, but I'm doing this now. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today is a uh, writing a card game. Uh, just a simple high-low one, but it will show off how to structure uh, projects in IDA because the way things are organized are actually rather different. Uh, you know, a lot of common languages have a concept of namespaces and then classes within them, whereas IDA has just packages, and it, it's not more limited, but it sounds more limited, and it, it helps to show off how this organization happens. Now, also, unlike uh, the previous project, the RPN calculator, uh, this one is actually going to be put up on GitHub, so if you're looking to do additional things with it, like, say, write your own card game, or even just add features to it, you will be able to contribute to this project. So let's begin. Now I'm going to need to look up where one specific package is, because there's a lot of them and I don't remember where all of them are. Okay, now, uh, well, I'll have to null this out, but, uh, no. This should compile. Um, if you're not familiar with my development methods, I tend to do very small increments, so just enough to get one thing working, compile, test that it actually works, and then add another small thing, compile, test that it works, and, and uh, so on. So even though this isn't going to do anything, we're going to begin here, and then I'll start to explain what is going on. Uh, and it does compile. Okay. So inside of the numerics tree is a few packages involving random number generation. And one such one that we're actually using here is the discrete random package. What this is is just random, uh, generates a random number within the range of whatever discrete type you pass it, you in instantiate it with. In our case, the integer. Uh, so this works uh, with any integer, modular, or uh, enumeration. Uh, there isn't a specific one for each of those. The discrete generator works with any of them. So what the way it is right now, it's not going to be that useful, and let me show off why. That is way too big of a number to use for card purposes. So, let's do this. Um, What's it called? Uh, 
Well, we actually have two options here. Uh, essentially, I'm going to numerically represent all the different faces that a card can have. Uh, so, your standard uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but then also the, um, the Jack, Queen, King, and your Ace card. The, there's two options with that because depending on the game, an Ace may be a 1 or may be a 13. Uh, in my case, just for the sake of better representing how Ida does new types or subtyping, I'm going to have it be 2 through 13 so that I can show off in practice how a few of the attributes uh, that the numeric types have uh, work and why they're nice to have. So now if we pass the face type into here instead and I'm actually gonna set up a build task this is gonna annoy me wonderful now you can just run high-low again, and you see that we actually get a number in between the range that we specified. There's going to be one other problem, however, in that if we run this multiple times, we always get a 10. Now it's not like this isn't doing true, uh, isn't randomly generating numbers. If we put a number of these there, You can see that we get a just a bunch of numbers that are all within this range. So what's going on? Why was it a 10 every time? And in fact, it's the exact same order every time. Uh, basically, this has to do with pseudo-random number generation. Uh, unless you have some kind of hardware numbered generator that is guaranteed, well, guaranteed to be random, uh, what they really mean there is that there's a high level of entropy that causes it to be very unpredictable. It's still probably going to follow some sort of pattern. Just the more complex it is, the better, really. Uh, if you don't have that, you're going to have to rely on software random number generation tools, and a lot of them are not programmed with a high degree of randomness due to entropy. Uh, the ones used in cryptography obviously are going to be, but for something like this, it's it's not. So we could import a random number generator package, or we could introduce some entropy ourselves. And that's going to be the approach I'm going to take here. Uh, let me look up what this function was called, because I forget. Okay, yeah. So it's reset, which seems like a weird thing to do at the moment it's called, but there's an additional parameter that we can throw here, which I'm going to do uh, what, integer, and uh, let me introduce another package. And I believe it's just date. We'll find out. Date is undefined. It's not date. I'm thinking of a different programming language, I think. Oh, yeah, I am. It's... It's called clock. Not block. Clock. And I'm actually not sure if I can just cast that to an integer. I cannot cast that to an integer. So it's two seconds, I think. Two 
Two seconds is undefined. It's not two seconds. That's why. It's just seconds. Oh, uh, what do we got going on here? And, uh, what the... Oh boy. Okay, let me... There we go. Uh, so one reason I leave all this stuff in is because I want to make it clear that no matter how long you've been programming, no matter how experienced you are, you're gonna forget silly little things like this, and it's good to see that, uh, you know, they still happen. That this isn't something that just happens when you're new. Uh, I mean, it's gonna happen less, of course. Uh, I can... I've almost memorized the layout of certain packages. I've just been doing this for so long. But uh, you're going to forget things like this. You're going to make silly, stupid mistakes, and it's all right. Uh, knowing the means to fix them is what really makes for a good programmer, not that you can memorize the entire system libraries. Don't, don't do that, by the way. They change. Don't, don't commit that stuff to memory. So now, if we run this, let's see, we get a 5, we get a 9, we get a 10, we get a 9. So we're actually getting a different number, a different face value. Uh, there's a little bit of an issue in that if you run this fast enough, you may notice that you get reoccurring numbers just because it's waiting for the seconds to change enough. Uh, but, as long as, well, in a real card game, it's not going, somebody's not going to be doing things that quickly. So, this is, this has introduced enough entropy for us to get a uh, reliably varying card game. So now, while this is great and all, this alone, any of these numbers, is not a full card game. We also need a suit type, as well as a generator for the suit. Now remember, I said we can use the exact same uh, discrete random package. But let's actually have a different name for the old one. Um, base generator sounds weird, but I'm leaving it. So now we're going to have to introduce a qualifier here. Uh, so let's do um, FG is base generator generator, and SG is suit generator generator. So now we're going to want to repeat this. We can have a random FG image and a space along with a remote random SG image. So we have two of hearts, ten of hearts, eleven of spades, ten of hearts, seven of spades, and why are you the same? Okay, okay, so we are getting... It, it, just coincidence, but okay. So, while this is working, while we're getting random cards and could write out the rest of the logic here, let's actually have a full representation for a card instead of these two separate components. And just... If you can model something, you generally should. You know, we're not on some embedded system, like some one of those really tiny handheld toys from the 90s where you gotta save as much space as possible. We don't need to do that to make our lives a little bit easier.
Uh, no with statement yet. Let's just represent the thing here. Uh, I do need to do the... That's fine. We don't need to hide it. Oh, Jesus. I forget that that's a thing. There we go. Um... We don't need this to be private. It's fine if these uh, the two fields we're going to add are publicly visible. Uh, just because this isn't particularly complicated code, and it, it's fine. It's fine. So this won't need a body, at least yet, but let's also add, in, well, well, yeah, let's, let's add in the deck, um, we'll write the game in after, but if you notice, uh, yeah, it happened here when I was doing that. We got a ten of hearts and then another ten of hearts, and obviously that you can't draw the same card out of the deck twice. Once it's out, it's out. Uh, so having an actual deck model will uh, you know, prevent that from happening. But also, we have two generators here, and if we have a deck created, uh, there is going to be a way to pull a card out of the deck uh, at random essentially shuffling the deck uh, with only one generator. So that simplifies our code as well, which should be useful, because if you're trying to follow along, it's better if there aren't two different generators going on. So let's do that. We get a deck. Now we're going to need uh... Oh yeah, we're gonna need to include the uh, cards as well. So draw is going to return a card and uh... We're going to need what type? So that'll provide the index through the deck, and I'm going to have to do... God, I keep forgetting about that. I think I have to disable the uh, snippets I wrote for myself. <laughs> I forget the snippets exist. Oh boy. I wrote them and I forget the snippets exist. So I'll explain what's actually going on here in a second. So I'm going to have a jump cut as I write these all out, because uh, it's going to be a bit tedious. I have to write out every single card that exists. Uh, we'll pick up when it's done. Now you don't need to see me type out all these. Okay, so I've got this all written out, and you may have noticed the problem I was making without really realizing it. Yeah, a little stupid. So. 
this would be 1 through 13. Or 2 through 14. A little bit of a mistake. So I've just got to add in the... Uh, The the uh, the fourteens, the aces in this case, are uh, yeah aces. So what's going on here is that we have the package deck, which essentially is just a a singleton of the deck itself. Uh, so this is not an object you need to create an instance of. It's just the the deck. There's a single operation draw, uh, essentially because with the random number generator in place, you would not actually need to... Uh, there would be no need to sh have a shuffle operation. It is going to be shuffled behavior anyways. And then we just have a bunch of stuff that actually makes it work. The index type is you is going to be used by the draw to draw a random index from here. Uh, that's why we'll be able to reduce the number of random number generators from two down to one. Uh, deck card is just a simple wrapper around the actual card that adds this little index. Uh, Obviously, this isn't the best approach to this, but again, just small increments. I'll show off a little bit saner way of doing this. And then we have the, the array of cards, because that's what a deck is, that actually provides the backing. So you can say that all the cards are there, and then because it defaults to it being uh, in the deck, then setting the others to the default values will, of course, have them in the deck. So we'll need to write up the draw. And I think I forgot to... I did. We'll give it a bit saner name. Uh, that's not a type, that's a package. Mad. Yeah, I use that actually. Mad. And what did I call that? Index generator. I think this should work. It's not perfect yet, but again, trying to do small increments. Uh, index generator not declared in random index. Doesn't need to be, right? Oh. Is that... no, that would just be generator. And... 49, I wrote space instead of spade. Yep. Uh, invalid... Oh, I know why. Because what we actually have to do is the... Uh, because this is just generating a number. This is generating some random number between 1 and 52, which represents the one of the cards in the deck. We actually have to get it from the backing, and then that should complain about it being a deck card rather than just the standard card, and that is correct. So then we can get the actual. And it compiles. So now let's go back into here. I had to clean this out because I did some stupid. Um, we're going to need this, but we're still going to need the edit text I.O. And we can just do this. Um, 
deck. Draw. So that'll get the card, and then we have to do, um... So let's do this. I think that should do it. Compilation unit expected. Wait, what? Oh. There we go. So you'll notice we reintroduced the same problem, and that just has to do with how we're not actually uh, calling reset on this generator. Now we have two options here. Uh, we can call reset on it each time before we draw. That would be quite tedious. Uh, rather, we would, you probably just want to have the deck shuffled to begin with. And if we do a package initializer, we can get that accomplished. Uh, so we can just call reset index generator. And we'll need to... Uh, oh. We'll need to reintroduce this package. Or, uh, what was it? Integer, seconds, and then clock. So now we should have a sufficiently random And we do. Okay. So now let's actually clean up this a bit. Um You'll find just the way I tend to develop things, I focus much more on the underlying stuff and then just build up. We could write out the game at this point. It's, it's totally viable to write out the game at this point, and it would work. There's going to be one minor issue that I'll get to. Um, you may even pick up on it, in that these cards are technically still left in the deck right now. But uh, I like to clean up the things first, so that I... Mostly so that I don't forget about them, but also it just kind of drives me nuts when the back-end code is cluttery. So if we change this to being a tagged record, then what we can then do is take the deck card and say it is a new card with, and then just the extension. So then with that in mind, uh, we can actually get rid of uh, basically all of this and just say, I think that's enough. We'll see if it complains on line 23. And it does not. So, I will go through and change all of these to uh, fit the new syntax. And now that that is done, let's build this. Right, and now it's rightfully going to complain that there is no actual, and that is because uh, it should, I think, unless I'm mixing up my languages, it should convert this. Is fine. It is not. Uh, okay, so we're going to have two options. Uh, we can return a class wide type. Uh, don't don't do that for this. Um, uh, returning a class wide type would allow us to return a deck card. And you really don't need to return the in deck value because if you have drawn the card, it's obviously not in the deck, anyways. So, what we're going to do instead it would just. I mean, it would be looked at as a view conversion. It's just. They're all just conversions in Ida. Uh, but we're going to reduce it down to the parent type of just card. Uh, 
So we are quite literally disposing of the in-deck field. We, we, don't, we don't need it anymore. And you can see that this does still work. And cleaned up the code a little bit. Now this is much easier to read through. This doesn't have the weird thing going on with the actual, and it, it's cleaner code. It's a good thing. So now, as I mentioned, there's a little bit of an issue in that the deck is, the card is technically not being removed from the deck. So that has to be implemented. Now if we have uh, what result? No, this can't be. That has to be an index type. And we have random index generator. So we're going to have to do a few things. One is that the backing uh, result, so that we get the card, we're going to have to change the index to false. We are also going to need to check if the randomly generated one has already been uh, retrieved. Uh, to I think that should do it. I think. Uh, no, because we removed we removed the assignment. Okay, at the very least, this doesn't complain about anything. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here is we get a we get the random card. You know, treating the deck as if it's shuffled. We're essentially we're drawing from the top. This is just a completely different mechanic uh, going on under the hood, where it's actually just drawing a random card from somewhere within the deck. But yeah, it's essentially shuffled deck, draw from the top. Because we're not using uh, stack or queue or anything else where the card would literally be removed, we're just identifying that the card has been removed through this field. So if the randomly selected card happens to be one that is already marked as being removed, go through, generate a new number, and then test if that new number is also removed. So essentially keep looking for a new card until you find one that has not been removed. Then mark it as even being removed and return that card. Obviously this is not the most efficient solution, however this is the easiest one to implement. It's going to run into some performance problems as you progress through the game. But, again, that whole incremental approach. We have the ideal model, essentially, for the, uh, for the deck and the card at this point. Uh, changing how things work under the hood can be done later without actually changing how the, the model, the programming interface, changes. So now, we can actually write out this game. Well, no, let's, uh, actually, um, I did build that, right? I'd build it anyways. Okay. Now, it is going to return potentially the same card just between these runs, because we're spawning up a whole new program and that means a whole new deck that has all of the cards in it again. 
Um, if we were to run this multiple times, you should not actually see the card at all. The same card at all, rather. But let's... Let's actually get these out now. Um, so we need H twice. And Again, I'll explain what I'm doing in just a second once I see if I'm on the right track here. Okay. Let's ignore the choice for now and then just print back out the... Uh, Whoa! No! No! Don't do that! Okay. And, you know, I... Uh, go away. Go away. I'll uh, just have it run in the background. So, obviously, in this instance, we'd guess higher, and... K, it sees that we actually entered an H. And some other key entirely. So obviously we don't want to recognize, have it recognize some random key. Uh, but it does get the input in an appropriate way. Uh, just pressing the single character, the single key, was enough. I didn't have to press that and then enter. Uh, which then saves us from the possibility of them typing multiple letters and then enter. Which, uh, don't... I don't want to set things up that way. So, with that in mind, let's do... I think I can do a case on that. So... So, uh, what we're going to have to do is, if the input is not valid, uh, go back up here. Which... Yeah, I know some people aren't going to like this, but whatever. Oh, also, um... because we want to see what the choice is, just to make sure that it's being set properly. So we test higher, entered higher, lower, entered lower, and some random key, it asks again. Okay, good, good. Oh god. Okay, obviously there's some minor formatting things. There's also a little bit of an input issue. And let's, um, fix that.
Nah, I'll leave that there, that's fine. It's colored uniquely enough anyways. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm gonna end up getting oh. So let's actually put the new line immediately after. Uh, just, just, yeah. We need a quit option. So, uh, when Q or Q. Just return. Now we should actually be able to quit, and the formatting should be a bit better. Okay. Oh, I gotta test the, um... Still does that. So that's because... Oh yeah, that's because of that. So, we need... We need another new line there. Now you'll also notice that when I select, it doesn't draw another card for me that I then guess again. It rather just quits the program. And this should make sense given that after the entered statement, it, there's nothing left. It doesn't loop back around. So let's actually encapsulate this entire thing in a loop. Okay. Now, one more thing is that currently it's just asking for the input. It's not actually doing anything with it. So what we also need to do is... And then what I'll have to do is set old card to a new card. And move back over. Then we're going to need a little bit of a test. I'm thinking of how to structure this. Well, actually, we can do a sacrificial draw. Uh, it'll reduce the game down to just 51 cards, but uh, that, that would be the easiest way of doing it. I'm trying to have this so it's not flawless when it's uploaded to GitHub. That way there's things that, uh, if anybody wants, they can actually do. Uh, so if we do a new card, let's check draw. Uh, actually, we just need the old card deck. So we can... I do need this, though. We're going to do our comparison here. Here? No. And, you know, here's fine. So we we'll want to see if... Well, the way high low works, it's on whether the face value is higher or lower. So, if we have a uh, new card... Well, we need another if statement. So, if new card is greater... Uh, new card's face is greater than the old card's face... Oh, of course, I I need to also check for the, um, the choice. The choice needs to... That was silly. So, if choice equals higher, 
and then the new card's face is greater than the old card's face. And we can also have else if choice equals new. Oh no, wait, that's, that's C sharp syntax. We do just that. But yeah, else if choice equals lower, and then new card's face is less than old card's face. And we're also right. Uh, so five gets higher, seven gets higher. I was wrong. Higher, lower. Uh, okay. So we have the working game. Uh, the only thing I want to do from this point is just an uh, image function. Unfortunately, you can't override the image attribute. I really wish you could. Because uh, it would make things more consistent, but um, we're going to need an image function which sort of operates the same way, but takes the card and prints it out, but does a little bit of thinking when it prints it out. Now we're going to need a, a card, so ADP. Um, yeah, I don't need to include anything. Thing. Maybe reference before has a value. Oh, that's interesting that the compiler doesn't realize that then. Because this, I mean, part of the reason why this exists is to prevent the choice from actually being referenced before it's assigned. Um, because during the first draw, it's going to do the sacrificial old card just so that it can shut up. Uh, grab the new card. It's the first draw, so it's going to set the first draw to false and then just skip over this where it's going to print out the draw and then ask for your choice. The second time around, it goes through. It uh, does the whole old card thing. Or, no, it's going to skip the old card thing because we've got the loop here. But it's going to get a new card. It's going to see that it's not the first draw, and then actually go through and uh, assess the choice. So, it's interesting. The uh, NAT compiler needs some better flow analysis. But, either way, I mean, we could disable that warning. Uh, it's, it's not going to reference choice before it's been assigned. It just will not happen. Um, but it looks like that compiled, uh, which is good. Uh, again, small little incremental improvements. But we can just go and I call that image function to get the uh, output of the cards now. Now obviously we want to handle a few special conditions here, so when the card is 11, then we're actually going to return a check. Uh, let's actually add the of, but still we're going to return a check of and then whatever the suit is. So you can see that that works. Um, just for the sake of orthogonality, I'm going to capitalize these entirely. Just because I nitpick like that. But 
you can see we have a working Hilo game, and just shy of 20 lines of actual code. The rest of this is essentially just a library that can be reused for other card games. So like I had said, uh, I'm going to be publishing this up on GitHub. I'll have a link down in the video description for where I put this up there. Um, hopefully this has helped you out. I've definitely shown a bit about package organization and different approaches to things. Obviously, this code needs some, <clears throat> needs some work still. Uh, but that's kind of the point here. I'm, I went through and showed the most straightforward ways to do this and then just built on top of that, not necessarily showing the absolute best approach to this. Because <clears throat> I can promise you if I did the absolute best approach to this, you're going to be like, what the heck is actually going on? Because it involves a stack and uh, pointer manipulations and stuff. That's an advanced subject, but yeah, hopefully this has helped you out. Uh, if it has, consider thumbs up, uh, liking the video, and also uh, consider subscribing. I try to produce at least one of these videos a week, uh, although the computer problems I've been having had gotten in the way. Uh, yeah. Have a good one.